Okay YouTube, time to put the bearings in. So I've got this one already set up. Now, this bearing has a little nylon side that retains it. And it's got this side. This side will always face inwards. Like so, into the crank. Yeah? It's always going to go like that. I've got it set up on here, same for this side. You can see in the vice, pusher. On the back is a big socket, and we're just going to push it in using the vice. Check on that. Okay, so need a bit more pushing over here. Set that back up. Socket on the back. This still. There's the number if you can see it. It's one one two nine eight nine three two four hundred. I believe it's just a it is made for this job so it can be a bit awkward trying to get everything lined up but once you do everything should just fly in which it is It's looking good to me. Now you can see that should be nice and in there. You'll know when it's in because you won't be able to push anymore on the vice. Let's just do it once more just for a clarification that it's in. Double check. That's definitely in. Happy with that. Same for the other one now. Again. Now on side facing that way. That side there, like that. Now if it falls in without pushing then you do have a problem. And your crankcase is worn out. So same again, put that on there, in our big socket, onto the back, line it up, push that out a bit, line it up, Get a little bit of tension on it just to and then adjust it as you need to. It's looking good. Push that one in now. There we go, nice and straight. Check on that. A little bit more to go, you'll see there's a little gap. It pushes right up into in the so let's just get that little bit more. Line it up again. You'll know 
because it won't turn anymore. Feels good to me. Let's have a look. Yeah, as you can see in there, you should be no gap, which there isn't. So yeah. And again. You want to just give it one one more, just to double make sure it's fully home. Not pushing on it too much, otherwise, yeah, that should do it. Nice things. Not that I've ever broken one, but right, it's a first for everything. Looks nice, and there we go. That's all in, ready for the seals to go on. Same, ready for the seals to go in there. We still use this tool, put the seals on, I believe, which gives it a puts it to the right depth. Okay, YouTube, now it's time for the seals to go in. Oh, the camera's gone down. Some reason. Look all right, yeah, I can see that. All right, time for the seals to go in. So on these, they are Baker Light seals. Let's start with this side. So we've got it like that. Our bearings are in, so the seal will go this way. Not that way, That's that goes in first. That way, in first, yeah? Get it seated. Now what we're going to be using is again, another big socket. Placing it on the back, like so, in the vise. And we're going to be using this still presser. So, let's get set up. Hand me the tricky part. Just got to keep adjusting it until it's going to push it in equally, like so. So that's all set up in the vise now, so we're literally just going to push it in with the vise. Nice and slowly. And you know when this one's done because it's got three. Three things on there. One, two, three. You can see that. So that's to tell you where the seal needs to be, yeah? So we'll make sure one more time on there and it's just the right size so it doesn't go past them. So let's set it up again once more. Just to double make sure everything is seated how we want it. Again, time for adjustments, like so. Check it, make sure you're happy. Yeah. Pretty happy with that. There we go. There's one side done and we didn't break it which is good yeah looking 
looking good to me. So let's get on with this other side now. Flywheel side. Again, bearing already in. And that goes that way in first. And if they drop in, then you've got a big problem. It means your uh, crankcases is worn. Worn down too much. Again, open the vice up. Get our on the back, our big socket. Get our pusher. Set it up in the vice. Now this is definitely the best method I have I do to get these seals in. It can be a pain. But with a little bit of this just seems to work very well. Seated properly. There we go, and just again push it nicely in. No, even more on this one when it's done because there's literally a the pusher won't push any more past that. So you see how that fits perfectly on that as a stopper to stop it pushing in any further which I have done in the past done it wrong actually and I've pushed them further than what they're supposed to be and it's still worked but it's always nice to get it to get it how it should be you know how it is out the factory when they made them so we'll do it once more just to double make sure it's all pushed in all set up. Yep, happy with that. And there we go, that's how you get the seals in without breaking them. So let's hope that it seals properly and I don't have to do them again because that is a pain in the bum. But I think it should be okay. So yeah, on with rebuilding now. Okay YouTube, now what we want to do is make sure these surfaces here, where the seal gasket's going to go, it's all nice and dry, no oil on it. Same for this side, make sure it's all nice. And what we need to do is wire so this needs to feed through this little plastic bit we left in there from this side actually would help yeah see that coming through there we go that goes up there Get some other parts that we need. That'd be helpful. That keeps it in. On the top, pushes in, and that actually we'll put that through first, and then that keeps that out the way for the gasket going in. And then we need our <sighs> I 
lead for the ignition coil and spark plug. So we'll push that again, push that through that black little rivet where that black pipe's just come from. Better if you bend this a little bit, get it a bit straighter and just push that down there. Yeah, so that's coming through. Actually, no, I've done that wrong. I need to push it through this side first. Little hole here, right there. It just feeds through first before we do that. Now we can push it through here. Through this hole. Actually first, before we do that, we need to put the gasket on. Got a fresh gasket here. Through there. hooks onto them and one thing I will say when we're doing this when we're putting this back on the crank shaft we need to make sure these surfaces are very clean so I suggest you get some rubbing alcohol get some blue kitchen roll, whatever you have, douse it in it and give him a right good clean because I've had it where these are dirty and it won't seal around the, the oil seal yeah and as clean as we can so there you go there's a tip for you if you put it back together and it's not sealing on the oil seal on the inside it could be this needs a clean could be not all the time sometimes it's either this is worn out or the seals just just not sealing so a bit of dry stuff give it a dry off There you go. Suggest taking this Woodruff key out of this as well if it's still in it. Use the top of it to lever it out. Like so. There we go. Super clean. There we go. Now what we can do now, now we can feed that through there, yeah, yeah hold on to that. Now we can feed our crankshaft into our new seals. Let's push it in. Be careful when you're doing it. Don't rip it, rip it up. Just make sure they go in nice and straight, and everything should be okay. Is I will say it is a little. It is quite a fiddly job. I will say. So it just requires a bit of patience just to get it as you can see it does require patience things just don't tend to want to stay together as much yeah. Oh, this is. How's that got round there? That's making me look silly now. This. This is a 
what I'll do, I'll use this gasket because it's a bit of an older one. And I'll do my pressure test with this first and then I'll put a fresh gasket on. Because they tend to get um, a little bit beaten up as you can see. Oh, you are joking me. I don't want to stay on that. Just need it to stay on. Wants to push this side through. What you can do is put some gasket sealer on it and that'll stick it on. Right. Yeah, it's been very awkward today for some reason, this. And I don't know why. Probably just doesn't like that I'm filming. There we go. Right. Now push. You can still see that. There we go. And just pushes together and there's a will there's a way right let's get these screws back in same ones as we took out yeah these there should be six of them one. try and show you where they go but it's a bit hard there we go right let's... one Two, three, down there, four, in that hole in there, five, six, so, not the easiest trying to film and put a saw together, I've got that light there, but uh, it's not really doing a lot. from that one for some reason. Probably because it's off. Knit them up. Two, three, four. Five. Then what we will do, don't need to put the, make sure that turns obviously, which it does nicely. We don't need to put the piston on yet, we'll put the cylinder on. Alright, so this cylinder can now go on, don't need to put the piston on. We do need this gasket however. Gasket on. Now, when I've done this, I will use some high temperature sealant around this gasket as I've had a few that just with the gasket it still leaks when it's under a pressure test so I found that a bit of high temperature sealant does the trick I'll go back in there down there we go for the pressure test we need a bit of rubber muffler 
just literally make two holes, poke the screws through, make sure you get this the right way, that'd help. Down onto the muffler, our trusty T27. Tighten them up. Yeah, so it is quite annoying if the seals don't seal properly because you have to take it apart again. But hopefully, all fingers are crossed for this to work. Then we need, I've made this, it's an old manifold boot filled with a bung and a load of, I believe it's epoxy to put on this to seal it on there and put your clamp on like so then what I use is a Mitivac vacuum and pressure tester so we'll hook it up to the impulse line that's on there We'll do vacuum first, pump it up to about, I usually go about there and just leave it, remember what it's on, leave it for about a minute, a couple of minutes and you should have virtually no movement or very minuscule but preferably no movement at all so I shall come back after a few minutes okay. okay YouTube so that didn't hold vacuum I wanted it to so let's do a pressure test a little bit of soapy water I believe I've found where it's leaking from as usual and you'll see it start to bubble Yeah. That's we do not want that. Now that's leaking from where the crankshaft seals onto the seal, not on the outside, on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is take it apart and try a different crankshaft because it's usually once it when it does this, it's usually the crankshaft is worn. Because it's a brand new seal, so there's no reason why it shouldn't seal onto the crankshaft. So yeah, let's... And I'll be back to do another pressure and vacuum test once I've done that. What I've done is, I've cleaned the crankshaft. Took it apart again, cleaned it. Put a little bit of uh, WD on when sliding it in to the seals. We are ready for another pressure test. So what we'll do first, got the Mitty Vac. We'll turn it to vacuum. Usually go to about 10, 10 inch HG. That'll do. Right, so we'll leave it for a few minutes to make sure it's sealed. Um, so we'll give that a bit of a move around tug on the crank, you know, make sure it's definitely not got a vacuum leak, which I already know this one hasn't, I've already tested it off camera, so get rid of that, and then we'll do pressure, between 7 and 8 PSI is the usual, let's go to 8, there we go, and then we'll get our soapy water again, Spray the seals. You should literally have no bubbles at all, really. Or very, very minimal. Spray the base gasket. That's not leaking. Base gasket again. All around where the base gasket is, we'll spray. Checking for leaks. Other side of the seal.
give it a little move. Check for any bubbles coming out when you're moving it. Nope. Again, like I say, I've already tested this one. I'm pretty happy with it. That's still at 8 psi, so yeah, that's sorted. But usually can you leave them for about five minutes, five minutes vacuum, five minutes psi for pressure. Um, and yeah, that is the pressure and vacuum test done. Which has been successful. Like I say, if it doesn't seal, just make sure you give your crankshaft a good clean first and then put a little bit of WD on it when you're pushing it in. Make sure there's no dirt or anything on it. And I think when I tested it last time, it was just a tiny bit of dirt. That can literally be the difference between a, a good pressure and vacuum test and one that doesn't hold very well. So we shall take this back off the bottom. Because we are done with this uh, little plate now. Put that to one side. Yeah, nearly off. One side. Take a what I made. Just literally filled it with epoxy, I think. A bit of a bung in there, but yeah, put that to the side, and then we'll take our cylinder back off because we need to put the piston on. Yeah, I never put the piston on when testing it because it's just well, there is a point, but if it's leaking, then you've got to take it all apart again, and it's a pain when you put the piston on. And what I will do, I'll put a, I use a bit of an old gasket to check the, uh, between the cylinder. So I'll put a fresh one on and I'll put a little bit of sealant on as well. Just to make sure it definitely seals. Because we do not want a leak from anywhere. Let's get a bit of tissue, clean this area up a bit. All the water. Okay, so now what we need to do is get a piston on. So let's see what we've got down here. Where's our pistons today? So we're going to try and use an old piston that come out of it. I've already put some fresh rings on it. Make sure it's all nice and clean. Definitely don't want any uh, dirt getting in there. Well, that piston does look a bit worn actually. Well, this is just an experimental build, really. I'm just trying to save money for the person who wants it built. So we shall try this piston and just see. So what we need is obviously the piston pin, which is there. We will need our little, wherever it's gone, Let's have a look. What do I need? Don't need that. Our little piston circlip, which has decided to disappear. It's our fresh gasket. There it is. Little clip that we need to put in once we've got it in but we also need our bearing 
needle bearing. So I shall dig that out. Candidate, and usually what I'll do with these little bearings that go in, go in there. I'll just put a little bit of oil on them. A little cap for you. Yep. Just dip it in. There we go. Let's soak off a little bit. Oop. Go straight in. Gives it a bit of lubrication. Now we try not to get it too much oil everywhere. So then we want there's an arrow on these that points down. We want that pointing down towards the exhaust. So arrow, you can just see it. on a new one you'll see it a lot better. Arrow facing down towards the exhaust. You need to remember which side you took you. So there'll be one of these in one side and you'll have taken one out the other side. So then, these piston pins here. So it's... Ooh. It's this side we need to push a pin in. Just take it, push it through that hole there. Usually what I'll do is I'll get it started first in my hand and just keep my th finger there. Because there can be, there we go, a little bit fiddly. Again, arrow down. Turn it over, see where you, your, uh, oh, there's the oil thing gone. Are you pushing it through? There we go. Just give that a little push with the pin again on here. There we go. Let's clean that mess up. If it's there, I'll manage to knock it over. So now that's in, we need to put our uh, little clip in. So that side's got it in. So again, this side, uh, this is just quite fiddly. So there's in that little hole there. Uh, usually I can use these little pliers just to kind of get them in a little bit. As you can see, it is. Super fiddly. Need to get it set on one side. Or oh, actually, I wonder if this works. If we take it, squeeze it together first. That might. But we've got to get it right on the end. No, that doesn't really do anything. Like I say, it is a very... I've not found a really good way of getting them in, to be honest. I'll try a little screwdriver just to push this in. This might be better. Just watch your thumb, though. There we go. That's just gone in. Give it a little push in. There we go. That's probably the easiest way, to be honest. But you just gotta watch your thumb and fingers when you do that. Yeah, that looks nice and in to me. The other side's already got one in. And double check, yeah, that's got one in. Cool, cool. Right. A little bit of sealant packed in, whichever you wanna use. 
do as long as it's high temperature sealant. Now we only need a little bit, so we'll get our, what I'll do first, I will, actually I will, I'll put a bit of sealant on first. As you can see, this one's uh, not in the best condition. So we'll take a little bit, get my screwdriver. And literally blob it on. Don't need a lot. Just keep it keeps it sealed. But don't get any in the actual crankcase. That isn't good. Just need to wipe it out if you do. Best you can. There we go, that's that taken care of. Now we can put our gasket on and that'll keep our gasket nice and secure whilst we're getting the cylinder head back on. There we go. So now what we need is to compress the piston rings. So I've got my little block of wood. This comes as a kit. And I'll try, it's a still part. So I'll try and find a link and put it on the description for anyone wanting one. Take them out of there. And what I'll do in another video is show you how to do base gasket deletes, which adds a little bit more compression to the saw, especially if it's a an older cylinder and piston, you can get a little bit more out of them. And with new ones as well, you're definitely getting a lot more compression. So let's get a tiny bit of oil, fill our cap up again, trying to spill it this time. Do. We usually use a little cotton bud for this. Your cotton bud, put it in a bit of oil, give it a little bit on the top, a little bit on the rings, just make sure they've got enough oil going in, make them slide in better, a little bit on the sides. Yeah, and then we'll put a little bit in our cylinder on the walls just to get it in a bit nicer not put too much in but it will just burn it off but you might get a bit a bit of smoke well actually that needs a bit of a clean that yeah remember to clean your once you've honed your cylinder it will need a bit of a clean a bit of a rub down you just want to do that first, make sure there's no rubbish in there. You see, just a bit of blue roll just inside. Make sure it's all nice. Which it is. So now we can put a bit of oil in. Just in the walls. There we go. Now. I like to take this and use it this way. Line your rings up with the little pins on the piston. Make sure that's clean. You just want to so make sure you leave a bit of room for your cylinder to come down as well. So not blocking the top at all. 
exhaust will always go that way with the uh, way the ring, the arrow is on the piston. And all we'll do is hopefully, no, nope. can take a few attempts. It is a bit annoying sometimes. You've got to push. There we go. That's on. Get rid of that. Line up. Line that back up. Like I say, make sure there's none in the uh, the actual crankcase. Get that out of there. There we go, looking good to me. Just seat down now. There we go. Now we can put our four bolts back in. And what I'll usually do is once it's all set and stuff, I'll give it one last pressure test just to make sure and vacuum test just to make sure our final bit is sealed properly. Not going in. Oh, it is now. You know, like I say, they can be a bit awkward, these saws sometimes, especially because they're older parts, to actually get them to seal. But I will be doing a video I've got some other seals that aren't original still seals. I think they're nit nitrile seals. Currently got a saw that I've put together with them and they've sealed fine first time. So that might be the new way instead of using... And they're only £2.50 a seal opposed to the still basically £10 for one seal. Which is good. Or is it £10? It might, I can't remember if it's either five or ten just for one seal. Yeah, so we'll make sure they're nice and tight. Watch there. Again, make sure our crankcase bolts are nice and tight, our six bolts. Which they are. Excellent. Right, we're getting there now. What I usually do at this point is put the muffler on so i'll get it cleaned and then we'll put the muffler on okay youtube we've now got our muffler exhaust nice and clean so what we can do now is stick it on have our new gasket and again I will on these put a little bit of this high temperature sealant around the gasket make sure we've got some uh, bolts first actually which I might not have any do we have any of these left Should have some, yeah, I do actually. Got them in this. There we go. Got our muffler bolts. Little thing on it. A little bit of sealant. And this is high temperature stuff, so it should be fine going in here. Just turn that off, don't need that. Right, 
again, make sure there's none in it. So we'll just take our little cloth and just make sure. A little bit more. Nothing good. Put our bolts in the muffler first. Hold it with your fingers. Flip it over. Now there is two sides to this muffler, but I don't think this gasket, sorry. I've always put it on this way. Where is the handy dandy device? I do have two of these T27s, but it seems to have vanished. I'm going to have to use this one. Not this one. Nope, there it is. A nice still one. Yeah, just getting through on the gasket a little bit. Muffler side, that side towards where the chainsaw thing is, just line it up. There we go. Nice and lined up there. Yeah, I always put it's a lot easier to get the fuel tank on after the muffler's on rather than trying to get the muffler on with the fuel tank already on. It's a pain. So this way is a lot better in my opinion. That's now on. Right, we're getting there. Here we are so far. Coming along. So now what I'll do is Ignition coil. And this is why we just unter you can just twist it back on, screw it back on onto this wire. He says. Let's just uh, get that like that. Let's turn this clockwise, there we go. And you'll know when to stop because it won't turn anymore. About now. Leave that to the side. Now get our flywheel. Not looking bad. Make sure that the bit where it sits on the crankshaft's a bit clean. So get the roll, just plop it in. Both sides, get a little little pick just push it in make sure it's right in there it's out the other side give it a little turn looking pretty clean to me now we need the key it goes on the crankshaft a little this little thing Keeps the timing of the saw, and that little keyway goes where that's gone, right onto the key, and we've just put in. But first, you need to make sure these wires go be in this little thing there. Yeah, usually a big one on top, little one underneath. Like so. Then we can put our flywheel on where the key is. There we go. And we'll get our little, little nut that goes on. This one's clockwise. I use an impact. Hold it, 
let it. There we go. That's all that needs. Now, to set the timing on this, what we'll do. Can you see, hopefully, that just pushes down and then this clips into that little clip there. Clip that in. It's not bad. Push that down. You can pull a little bit of wire just to keep it nice. There you go. I just use a little business card. Yeah. In between flywheel and the ignition coil I turn it till the magnetised bit comes round and pulls onto the ignition coil so that's now usually that's how I set the timing now little screws with little washers on oh better keep that on and go into the Thing. Get a little push down. Get our other one, which is in here somewhere. There. Into this hole here. Seem to line up. Yeah. Probably better leaving that a little bit slack just while we get this one in. Wherever it is, being a bit awkward. Should just go in. There we go. Tighten that up. Tighten this one up. Get them just hand tight with this. And then this little thing just clips onto here. Little slack. There we go. Again, clip that back in there. Take your card out. Just give it a spin. There we go. And that's how I set the timing on these. See, it's just, I believe that's how to set the time anyway, it's always worked for me. Oh, got a bit of, bit of a sealant problem here, going everywhere. It's never good. Yeah. So now that's done. Now we can move on, we can put the oiler on actually, let's do that, because I still need to clean the fuel tank for this, I'm going to choose an oiler out of my little box, box of oilers, make sure it spins nice, all nice and clean, yep. So, where's that little there's one and there's two so what we want put this little black oiler thing in this way like so and the oiler just connects onto that like so this ignition lead goes underneath the oiler as it captures it when it pushes down there we go these little the little stubby ones are for the oiler as we don't want to use the long ones, that would be very bad. 
so it's definitely important that we get the bolts back in the right positions where they go tight again, don't have to go extreme. So then we need our oil pipe, which is here. What we'll do, we'll get our little bag. Oil filter, this way. Pop it in the in the hole there where it is. Now I usually use a little screwdriver just to push this seal in. You'll know if you need a new pipe because it won't seal properly, but this feels okay currently. And that pipe just clips onto you can see in there. Pushes on nice. It's just Make sure it's on, which it is. Right, I think next, we'll obviously be changing the spark plug, that's an old one. I just use old spark plugs for the uh, pressure test. Also, what I did forget to do is when you're doing your pressure test and vacuum, spray round the spark plug as well, because that can leak. But we're putting a fresh one on, so it should be all good. Right, I'll get this fuel tank cleaned, and I shall be back. Hey YouTube, now we've got this all nice and clean. Our tank, we can now put it on. So what I'm going to do is literally turn the saw up like that, and just gently pull, pull it apart, yeah? I'm going to stretch it a little bit, got a bit of stretch in it. That's what I'll do. Pull that boot on just out of the way. And remember to get our impulse line. That needs feeding through this little hole here. If you can see it, what hole it comes up. We need the light on actually. Now we can actually see. So we need it through that little hole. That little hole there. And just walk this on. There we go. Pull our impulse line through a bit. Now that's definitely the easiest way. I can recommend doing that. Get our, our bolts. Coming along now. Just give them a little tighten, not too tight. You can strip these quite easily. Show them if the bolts are tight. Yeah. On the top. Yeah. Yeah. And there we have it. Definitely getting there now. So what I think I'll do next is 
still got a bit more cleaning to do, but that's okay. Doesn't really matter which order you do this, you can either put the pull cord on or you can put the handle on. So yeah, I think we'll get some more cleaning done and then go from there. Okay YouTube, so now we've got all the parts clean that we need, we can start assembling the rest of this saw. So what I'm going to put on first is the side casing back on, all nice and clean. These threads go on this front side here, and then the finer threads that go into the casing go on this side. Yeah. Let's get them in. One down here. I'm going to have to put these too tight because they're very easily stripped. These screws, especially these ones here into the plastic, that's just good. Get it tucked down. Right, let's get this anti vibration mount on. It goes here on this side here and that uses these little screws again don't t over tighten these because it's only into the plastic They're very easily stripped there you go, that's all they need, little, little snug fit. May as well get our other one on. This one goes here. They've got a little groove on them where they sit on these parts. So again, we need a couple of screws that we need. Oh, These ones, a little bit longer, fine screws. I'll just put one in this one for now, because the earth lead off the handle needs to go on this other one. There we go. That's that. What we can do? May as well flip this over. Worm gear for the uh, turning the oiler. That can go on now. Make sure it slots in nice. Put our plastics on. Actually, no, we'll leave the plastics off for now. And we will put our handle on, actually. So, we've got the screw that's already in there. Take this bit of paper out. We can put our boot on. Put our boot on there. it lines up there's a line that goes on it make sure that lines up with the line on the tank got our clamp we'll always put a new one on this because the clamps do get worn a new boot as well and i'll use this just to push it into place there we go Check underneath, make sure it's yet. Yeah, that's all nice on. Now to get this, what I'll do first is I'll put the impulse line on to the that little tube. This little thing here connects onto there, so I'll put that on first into the handle. Make sure you push it right all the way on. I don't want that coming off. Then I'll clip this little wire in that's there underneath the handle 
from where it came off. There's a little clip. Just push it onto. There we go. There's your earth wire that comes on this side. So right for the boot, what I'll do, I'll lift it up and then actually what we need to do, if you haven't already, is put your fuel pipe on first actually, that just sits in, pushes in, you'll see there's an arrow on this that slots into place, so now it's in, I'll use a little um, Little, make sure it's not a sharp screwdriver you're using for this to push the seal in. You definitely don't want to uh, break through it. And then that can just get pushed through the handle just so it's in then. And I'll just smush the boot with my fingers. line it up and just push it on so it's all smushed there I'll just force that there and I'll get my fingers in just give it a little, little bit of a can be a bit fiddly getting this boot on but this is the best way I've found just to smush it and just pop it through like so there you go it's all popped in now just maybe give it a couple of wiggle just to make sure that there's a hole there on the handle it needs to line up with the hole on the boot so you know you've got it in place put our screws for the AV mounts one on the back just get it into place then I don't know too tight with them literally just until it stops moving and then push down on that so we can get that in. There we go. We can now put our other bolt on. Or screw, should I say. Get that wire there, through that, and then into the AV mount. Again, don't need to go stupidly tight. Right, now that's on, what we can do, put our handle bit on now, so we'll need this. Another anti-vibe mount, just screws in this hole. And that just needs to be hand tight as well. Because once that's on it, it can't unscrew. Yep, yeah, there we go. And what we'll do, already a screw in there. Line it up. Just start screwing it on. There we go. Handle's all on now. Now what we can do our plastics on so that'll go on there like so and this little piece just clips got a little clip there that just slots into there and a bit of little push there through the plastic might need a little screwdriver just a little a little there we go it's these smaller bolts that go into these plastics. That's one. Two. One here.
and three. One up here at the top. Again, doesn't need to be tight, well, overly tight, just make sure it's nipped and that's all you need. So we've got that on, now we need our little bit of grease for our needle cage bearing. You know, just a little bit inside, a bit on the outside. Turn it round a little bit more. Need a little blob here and there, that'd be good. Over the crank. Done with the grease, don't need grease for anything else now. Now that's on, we can put our sprocket on. That just they'll line up with the wormer that goes on clutch reverse thread so left left way will tighten it there you go little shot with the impact does that that's all it needs because when it's spinning it tightens it anyway the way it turns so it can't actually come off Right, what do we need? We can put our bumper strip on with our chain catcher. Goes there. This size bolt. A bit thicker than the other ones. Just goes on there. Get this started. on chain catcher now what we can do is pull our fuel line out at this point and then what we can do is usually I'll get a little pair of pliers just pull that up a little bit just so you can get your fingers on it and then push this f fresh fuel filter on there. It can be a bit tricky this actually because it is a bit of a, as you can see, a bit of a tight squeeze to actually get it in there. And that again. Doesn't help when you it's and you know there we go, that's on. Yeah, so now that fuel filter's on. Nice and snug. Just double make sure it's pushed on, yep, push that in. Yeah. Now what we need is our carb. Fresh carb. Part number. It's the 126D. For the accelerator pump, they are the best carbs currently. For this saw. Fuel pipe, and do not forget to put these on first. Yeah, you got your ring. Oh. 
your ring and this plate that goes on in here. So I put the plate on, then I put the ring in. And then what I'll do is I'll put the fuel pipe on first to the carb. Then I'll push it on. But once I've got it a little bit on, I'll pull this red throttle lever onto its position. And you'll see where its position is. And I'll just hold it whilst I push it on. There we go. That tank vent just slots into there. This choke lever just goes on here. Now we are ready for the filter base. What goes on? Make sure this little vent on the carb is through this hole. Now we've got two nuts that go on here. Eight mil, I believe. Yeah. Just tighten them down. Not too much. using your wrist really just to gauge the tightness it's good enough for me new air filter going on it just pushes on like so then we want our air filter cover goes on where is it push down and twist that's on. Now what we can do is put our fresh one of these on. Like so it's summer currently, so this goes shows you've got a sun and the uh, icicle things like that. So that'll block heat from the carb, from the case to the carb, because it's summer, and vice versa in winter when you change that it lets heat to the carb to get it to keep it warm when it's winter. That's on. Right, let's get some fuel in it, and some oil, and fire it up. We'll get a bar and chain on it, but I'll make sure it's oiling first. And yeah, nearly there. Get our bar on. Chain. Case with our nut slides on. I'll do a tension of this, what I'll usually do, put it down, give it a few spins, lift it. Got a little bit of a gap, but once you tighten that up. Give it a little nip actually, a little nip, another spin, it should be okay. Yeah, feels good to me. Is that tightened? Right, let's get some fuel in it, fire it up. So there we have it, the 200T all back together. Running lovely. Well, yeah, that is the end of the second part of this video on how to save your 200 T's. So, 
I didn't put a new piston on this one, just put some new rings on, but I think the next stage would probably be putting in fresh piston on because the cylinder is in good condition. But obviously the piston wears a lot quicker than the cylinder. But this is just a basically can you fix this as cheap as possible just so it runs kind of job. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed watching. And there we go, that's how you can save your old 200T.